here is a case. He is a 40 year old male patient who presented with the emergency early morning with a benign swelling. Uh, on taking the history, patient, as he described uh, exactly, he felt something wrong last night during sexual intercourse. He's, he felt sudden release of the uh, penile erection, which is sudden detumescence. Uh, as you see now, uh, on examination, there is hematoma on the left side of the penis. Uh, uh, that hematoma deviates the penis to the opposite side, which is to the right side. So the deep bluish discoloration together with the swelling gives the classic egg, uh, eggplant deformity of the penis, which is a classic picture of a fractured penis. Fractured penis in most of the cases is a clinical diagnosis and diagnosis can be uh, put on uh, based on uh, medical history and physical examination. And it is a true medical emergency. Okay, and the patient has to be taken to the OT. And here is the patient on the operating theater. So uh, there are five basic steps in repair of fractured penis. The gloving of the penis, evacuation of the hematoma, identification repair of the tunical tear, and then finally closure of the fascia and the skin. Let's start first with the gloving of the penis, okay? So uh, the classic uh, exploration of the penis uh, through subcronal incision and if you are operating uh, with hyperspedius i think this incision uh, is going to be familiar with you so start with uh, uh, stay sutures uh, the first one uh, in the glands penis and uh, a few millimeters proximal to the coronal sulcus uh, uh, take the incision or put the incision in the penis circumferentially or all around the penis so I start with the skill ball. So uh, because I'm, you know, uh, I'm familiar with the uh, hyperspedius. So this area, which is uh, close to the urethra on the dorsum of the penis, I usually uh, make it or perform it with a scissor. So the same, okay? So just in this area, uh, close to the urethra, you can uh, just dissect the skin completely, the, the down surface of the skin, and then you can cut it. You can complete with the scissor or a knife as you prefer. You see now I am dissecting down, but you know because there is a hematoma and there is a swelling. You see, I'm away. I'm away now from the urethra. I switched my mind from the scissor to scalable. So from end to end, it is a straight line. It is you know easy to be easy uh, by scalpel. Okay. So now the we are done from the incision circumferential incision. And just for, uh, for the degloving to be easy, uh, it is preferable to take stay sutures, uh, one at uh, 12 o'clock as this one, okay, and another one also at 6 o'clock. Uh, those stay sutures will be very helpful in traction and counter traction and makes the degloving uh, more easy, okay. Those three stay sutures, one at the glands and the one at 12 and another one at uh, 6 o'clock okay so those are the stays now and we have to start now the gloving just I'm gonna to teach you a trick uh, to the, you have to introduce the the uh, scissor by this way closed and then open okay yes just you down to the uh, the surface of the tunica this is the correct surgical plane if you reach this plane the, the gloving will be um, easier Okay, so you see the white glistening surface of the tunica with the superficial veins. This is the correct surgical plane. Once you uh, reach, uh, uh, once you reach uh, this plane, the the gloving will be more easy. Okay, uh, see the scissor again. So uh, yes, traction and counter traction. So in the gloving makes it more easy. So traction and see introduce the scissor closed and then open and then cut the fascia in between. Okay. Uh, by this way, uh, immediately on the surface of the tonica. Uh, so the, the gloving can be made, can be performed uh, alternating between sharp and uh, blunt dissection as you see. If you, for example, now I see now I can do blunt dissection with the ghost. That's okay. Okay. So the I can see now I, uh, the hematoma. 
but um, uh, as I said, this uh, incision is a very, uh, very nice, uh, very convenient uh, exploratory incision. So you have to complete the, the gloving till the proximal end of the, uh, the penis until you explore the whole corpore. Okay, you have to explore, explore the, uh, the corpus, each one. Uh, okay, so usually the, the tear is unilateral. So uh, uh, fracture penis, by the way, it's a, a traumatic tear in the tunica, tunica albuginia with disruption of the carpus uh, cavernosus. Usually it is a unilateral, usually in the, in the proximal part, okay, usually in the right side, uh, okay. So, but this one is a distal one, okay. So this exploration is nice, you see, I, ex I can explore both corpore till the proximal part. And I also, I can explore and examine the carpus suspensusum for any urethral injury. See, I'm doing the, the, the gloving completely now. Okay, evacuation of hematoma. You, this is a very important step. You will never see the tear unless you evacuate the hematoma completely. And uh, you see the hematoma, okay, spreads in all the facial planes now. So there is no classic way now to have to evacuate it, but just, I, you know, I started just step by step uh, evacuating the hematoma, cutting the fascia and, okay, evacuating the hematoma, okay? Uh, See now the hematoma almost done, and the, as you see, as as you as you to start to see uh, fresh bleeding, it is you know now you are close to the tear, close to the corpora, okay. So uh, some people also said it can be explored through penis scrotal incision or directly or immediately on the hematoma, but I prefer still prefer, okay. Uh, this incision, it's, as I said, it's a good exploratory incision for both corpore and also carpus has been chosen for any urethral tear. Uh, uh, just a bipolar, if you want to use any the therm, it will be bipolar. Okay, third step, identification repair of the tunical tear. The, the third step, this is a good picture. You have to see the tear completely. You have to see clearly before uh, repair. Okay, after the hematoma uh, evacuation, now you can see the, uh, the tear. Uh, you have to see it clearly, as I said, okay, for, uh, for better, for better closure of the, uh, the tear. Um, closure of the tear, there is many schools, the uh, traditional school uh, with a non-absorbable suture. But if you are going to use a non-absorbable suture like a purulene, the it should be inverted, the knot should be buried, okay? Uh, if you wanted to use, just I'm feeling you see it, I am inside the corpora now, just for demonstration. I am good, I am on a, an, uh, okay. Just I start the, the, the previous one to see, uh, to show to you, it is, it is so bloody. So we, you have to use a, the tourniquet, it's better to use a tourniquet. As you see now, the, uh, the, the blood is filled now. I, I didn't cut the previous step, just to, to show to you the difference between, you see, you can see the difference in bleeding. Now this field is clean and bloodless and I can uh, take my sutures now more comfortably. So this is uh, the, uh, the uh, absorbable, as I said to you, the traditional school using a non-absorbable. Uh, but if you use a non-absorbable, it should be inverted, should be, the nuts should be uh, buried. And also you have to enforce the tear, okay, with the fascia just to, to make all nuts buried. Uh, now the uh, people have switched a little bit to absorbable, especially after invention of uh, more prolonged uh, absorbable suture like uh, uh, the PDS, for example, which lasts like at least for six weeks. If you use absorbable, uh, you can use interrupted, you can use uh, suture, uh, continuous, locked or unlocked, it's up to you. Okay, so we have to close the tear completely. Okay, now the tear is closed completely now in a good uh, blood field. Okay. So as I said, it is uh, the, uh, commonly to be unilateral. Most, uh, the, most of the, uh, the fracture of the tear on the right side, uh, the right side unilateral, uh, and the proximal uh, corpus is uh, covernosus. And uh, it is associated with injury to the urethra in just like around 10%. Okay, now release of the tourniquet 
and you may expect some bleeding and I will um, uh, comment on this point later on okay just release now of the tourniquet okay closure of the fascia okay I believe that all the layers that uh, have to, uh, have to be have opened should be uh, closed okay so uh, the I see closure of the fascia is uh, is important um, it is a, a anatomical closure uh, uh, returning everything to normal and also uh, you see this area I'm enforcing the area of repair okay so for for that if for any uh, any bleeding or hematoma okay I expect that it would be compressed temporarily by the uh, covering fascia so close the fascia on both surfaces of the penis ventral and dorsal surfaces of the penis okay um, uh, I yes I spoke about the um, as I said, it is unilateral, on the, mostly on the right side, commonly on the proximal part of the corpus cavernosus. Yes, I wanted to speak about the uh, uh, workup. If the diagnosis is clear, it is, by the way, fracture penis is a clinical diagnosis based on medical history and physical examination. If the diagnosis is clear, don't waste your time, okay, on making any unnecessarily uh, imaging. Uh, take the patient immediately to the uh, operating theater. Uh, however, if the diagnosis is unclear okay, or, uh, or and or doubtful, you can do a Doppler ultrasound, penile Doppler ultrasound, cavernosography, MRI. All of those can be done. Okay, for more confirmation of the diagnosis, also can be done for uh, academic interest for sure. Okay, but as I said, this patient, for example, I didn't do any uh, imaging studies. I just take the patient immediately to the operating theater. Okay, so history, physical examination, as you see, the eggplant deformity, the, all the clinical signs were obvious in this patient. There is no need for the, okay, for any further uh, workup. If there is a bleeding in the urethra, there is indication for ascending urethrogram. As I said, it's not common. It is, you know, varies in the literature from 3 to 20%, but there is agreement in most of the published data in like 9 to 10% of the incidence of uh, urethral injury. Okay, and if you find any urethral injury can be repaired at the same time. See now I'm you know almost done from covering the uh, the closing the fascia, approximating the fascia and both uh, penile surfaces. This uh, this should be done with absorbable suture for sure. Okay. Um, all the sutures, all the sutures should be absorbable, or oh, except if you wanna, okay, even so, and this patient I used absorbable, but I'm, I'm said, uh, other than that here, okay, all sutures should be absorbable, even the skin, even the skin. You see now, I'm almost done, the fascia is completely covered, there is no bleeding now, I did some compression, I will show you later the compression, okay, now the fascia is completely covered and the penis is almost returned to its normal condition, or normal anatomy, okay. Uh, here's a good picture. As you see now, the penis is completely covered. The fascia has been completely approximated. Okay. Closure of uh, this is it should be the last step. Closure of the skin. Okay. So um, uh, because of the uh, edema, because of the swelling, so it's better not to close the skin from one end all around to the other end. But it's better to take take landmarks. So the landmarks that uh, can be taken are 12, 6, and 3, and 9. 12, 6, 3, and 9. And, uh, and then you can close the skin in between, okay? Uh, like this one, okay? I, this is at 9 o'clock. So after that, okay, you can close the each quarter alone, okay, separately. This is just, you know, for good uh, adjustment or adjustment of the edges. If you close all around, starting from, for example, 12 going uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, the skin will be, uh, uh, will be corrugated and you will find it is, it is finally at the end, it will be a non-equal edges. So please, just if you wanted to close the skin uh, appropriately, uh, uh, use landmarks, okay? And it should be absorbable. Uh, if, you, if you have chromic, okay. If you don't have chromic, uh, the undyed sutures, Viacryl also uh, nice. Okay, this is, uh, this is the skin now. As you see now, the skin is, uh, is almost done. It's good approximated. 
and this is a, should be a good cosmetic results. Okay, I wanted to stress on two points now. You may expect uh, after release of tourniquet, trouble, trouble, some bleeding, so compress. After you finished, after you done from the uh, repair of the tear, don't take any sutures. You may expect bleeding. Just after release of tourniquet, compress and compress and compress. Three to five minutes of compression is the only solution and in such cases. Also, I wanted to show to you if you are now, I didn't, the, this patient didn't have any bleeding of the urethra, but if you wanted to just to explore the urethra, just it's easy on, you know, uh, on table, just put a urethra caster and see if the urethra caster goes well, certainly with any bleeding, it is a good, a good sign. As I said, the uh, incidence of urethral, cast, of urethral injury is not common, around 9 to 10 percent in some series. If you found in urethral tear, you have to uh, repair, you know, uh, following the surgical principles, interrupted sutures over the catheter. Uh, it's usually a partial tear. It is very rare to be a completely tear or a pulsed uh, urethra, but anyhow, can be repaired also on the same time and for sure urethral cancer will be for 7 to uh, 10 days. Otherwise, if there is no urethral tear, I prefer to put a urethral cancer just for 24 hours. Uh, you just it will be a uh, painful uh, uh, voiding for the patient if without urethral cancer. So, so just put a urethral cancer for just like 24 hours, it's, it will be uh, quite enough. This is for sure a good uh, uh, indicator for intact urethra. Uh, here is a picture 24 hours after, as you see now, after exploration, for sure there is a, a trauma and of the pax fascia, and you see now the hematoma of the scrotum, and it is this expected because there is injury of the pax fascia. Uh, of the back fascia, there is injury of the back fascia, and there is a picture uh, uh, seven days after postoperatively, and you see now complete appearance of the hematoma. Okay, uh, and the good cosmetic results of the uh, closure. Uh, I wanted to have to stress on there is no sexual excitement or intercourse for four to six weeks. This is a very important postoperative care. Uh, this is a pre-op and post-op for, for that reason, surgical exploration is the, uh, the viable option or it is the standard option for fracture penis repair. So in this video, again, in summary, we introduced the steps, the gloving of the penis, the equation of hematoma, identification and repair of the tunical tear, and finally closure of the fascia and the skin. Uh, thanks for having me in and the best of luck for all. Thank you.